I'm uh, I'm speaking from Bangalore. Yes, sir. Chapan. I I fully understand Telugu, but I face difficulty in uh, composing sentences in Telugu. So no I problem. can answer I'll me in Telugu. I I'll understand. Okay. okay, I'll do mixed. No problem. Chapan. Yeah, uh, I have a problem. Uh, like I'm an atheist, but uh, I'm not uh, that kind of an atheist who is well read and well uh, researched. Uh, okay. right uh, but when i was in teens the claim of god doesn't make any sense to me so then i stopped believing in god so i have a problem where when i socialize with people okay mm. uh a situation comes like i have to defend myself but i have not read either of the things like like puranas or uh, bhagavad gita these kind of things and i haven't researched enough in science too so how do i hmm. deal uh, with this such kind of a situations no most likely the easiest way is to not get into such discussions where you uh, you will be left unguarded right ante meeku etwanti etwanti aadharam lekunda because to support your claim or the lack of belief of yours you need some yeah. kind of evidence kada so if yeah. you can't support that the best way is to get out of it or mm-hmm. there are some situations where you can just use logic and you don't need science you don't need actual knowledge of scriptures there are many many things where you can just use simple logic and ask innocent questions and then break it down ah. right even if you know a little bit of about you can see f- first thing we can't talk with full authority when you don't have uh, the knowledge of that for example i have not yet read all of the vedas i know here and there a little bit so i don't even get into any discussion on that it's on my reading list and it will mm. will do it in the next year so until that time i will always predicate my sentences saying i have not yet read vedas now bhagavad gita i have read end to end ramayana i did read end to end so no one can uh, so if, if they want to challenge and ask they can easily come and i'll show up references i'll do all of that in from these both things mahabharata i'm half way through puranas yeah. half way through right yeah. but if i don't have any authority on something i don't even get into that discussion you don't have to agree or disagree and say that let's say there they are throwing something down in your throat saying that yeah this is my my dharma and, and here we win or something like that Mm-hmm. you can simply say i'm not convinced and until i get my evidences i don't need to extend this conversation okay so because okay. being an atheist is not about uh, proselytizing or trying to defend everything right see being an atheist is mostly a personal position you yeah. don't believe in the supernatural that's that's the simplest definition that's it right so if somebody starts uh, making references uh, you know my religion is great and all so you should simply say be happy in your religion apparently nobody is happy in their own religion because every time they have to prove someone else is wrong or they are great okay you look at this uh, insecurity of these fellows right if yeah. their religion is the best and great in their mind they should be happy and they should in their mind they should think that we are all losers but they never do that they always come and show off that my religion is better than that religion or my position is better than your position only an insecure fool will do that right so yeah. if you are if they are throwing this thing on your head then you have to understand that they are insecure and they are asking you to refute it with whatever you can mm. that that's my going to answer the the only other way is to read up on all these things and defend with full evidence but i know that it's not feasible for everybody to do that yeah i'm reason. in a profession where it needs consistent uh, upgradation so i have to yeah. read uh, yeah right. uh, about my career so that then that is not a feasible solution the only way is to get out of the argument saying i don't believe in you or i don't believe that and if it's your belief that uh, a god did it or your religion is great be happy about it yeah right yeah. Yeah. thank you so much and i have, uh, if i'm allowed uh, can i ask one more or two questions? yes please yes please yeah and we have uh, uh, seven days in a week globally ha huh, yes ha huh. and we we have our own name here 
like the shaniwara banwara mangal somwara like yeah, this yeah. and they uh, literally translate to english too so when mm-hmm. these days uh, i mean in what period these days got globalized okay. seven days yeah this this is actually a recent thing and the the reason i say that is in our uh, ancient epics whatever we know as ancient epics right there is never like ramayana for example or the mahabharata for example there is no discussion about shaniwara banwara uh, shukravara anything like that they always yeah. talk in uh, uh, what do you say the fortnightly dates mm-hmm. ekadashi dwadashi chaturdashi trayodashi ah. right so their distinction is 15 days it's mm-hmm. not 7 days at all right seven days is a recent tradition into indian thing but it's probably common in the europe okay i'm not even saying it is a christian invention because the words in those are not at all christian see okay. sunday and moon day those are obvious because they are for sun and moon fine but all the other days are not at all christian they are roman in nature okay okay so ma uh, sorry what what was the uh, this thing tuesday okay yeah. tuesday yeah. is for i think venus's day okay okay yeah. wednesday is about I, i don't know exactly odin's day odin is a guy from uh, norse mythology oh okay. odin's day has become wednesday okay yeah. thor's day you remember who thor is right yeah thor and yeah. Yeah, thor yeah. yeah thor is again a norse god thor's day thor's day has become thursday okay mm-hmm. now then when these uh, uh, what do you say nordic gods were making their names mm. greeks and romans were attaching their own gods names okay okay that is jupiter's day is thursday okay okay saturn's day is saturday mm-hmm. now if you easily t- translate that the fastest moving or at least the most important item in the sky is the sun so that is the first day sunday mm-hmm. next important globe on the uh, on the sky in the sky next important object in the sky is the moon mm-hmm. so moon day the next day is moon day okay okay then in sequence it's not about the biggest object it is the speed of which they move okay i think mercury moves the fastest after moon then moves the next speed is with uh, uh, venus and then with jupiter and then saturn okay okay these are the sequences okay i think i missed friday but you get the picture those are the yeah, five yeah I, i got the answer right so that's how they got it it's not at all indian the whole uh, sunday to the uh, uh, what do you say vanavasara somavasara these kind of days are a later addition okay. all our and, and that means yeah. these things like uh monday is for shiva uh saturday is for shani and and, and this doesn't make any sense uh, in that concept. absolutely no sense okay. absolutely no sense it's if if they say that ekadashi belongs to shiva then there is at least okay at least we can say that they had something on original if they say monday is for shiva then it is total bogus because it's coming from uh, ancient civilizations uh, i don't know it's definitely not even christian is before predates christian uh, uh, civilizations yeah yeah even okay, uh, just, uh, just, uh, our the 60 hours and 60 minutes concept right that is also not indian that is also not even uh, modern okay it's probably sumerian because the number 60 is very very important to sumerian people so their whole number system is with uh, 60 and then uh, multiples of 60 that's why the circle has 360 degrees because it yeah. is easy to divide Uh, except for 7 all other numbers can divide uh, 360 a uh, 60 can be easily divided down into 20s yeah. right so that's also not yeah, i watched some... this uh, like uh, babu gogini sir uh, gogini sir did some concept about uh, calendar i had seen that uh, yes yes yeah it was complicated i just left, left off of it <laughs> no no we just have to simply yeah. understand that these yeah. are yeah. borrowed concepts at some point yeah. in time they have been borrowed and then baked into our stories yeah. uh, then these guys have started making ashtotra uh, sahasranama and all those things when they were constructing by then the assimilation was complete see greeks okay. were also thought of as rushis 
okay they were called yeah. yavana rushis greeks ah. were revered as locals by our yeah. uh, people ancient people greeks were also revered as so when greeks brought these concepts they have see the whole uh, uh, astrology concept also is smuggled and uh, not even smuggled it is just borrowed from greek yeah right so yeah so and this astrology if if we come to like uh, astral astrology then we don't he, uh, see an event like when rama born they called some a jyotishi and and as per is nakshatra then they named him we, we don't see such uh, events right in puranas ha ah, the naming didn't happen according to the star i think that was the recent edition but i think in ramayana there is a discussion on which star they have uh, uh, gone so this is why i'm saying this ramayana is mm-hmm. also written at a later point in time after contact with the greeks it's not at all ancient okay okay right? yes, sir yeah thank you so much nice talking to you right sir thanks a lot thank you thank you